Apple released the first desktop version of its Mac OS operating system. The first Harry Potter movie and the first Lord of the Rings movie both came out. Alicia Keys and Destiny's Child were topping the charts, and Bill Clinton left office. 22 years ago was also the last time that mortgage rates were as high as they are now. Yes, they're higher now than they were during the 2008 financial crisis. Mortgage rates were the lowest in American history in January of 2021. Then Joe Biden became president. Over the past two and a half years, mortgage rates have almost tripled. In the meantime, inflation rates are still climbing higher. This past month, as I traveled Nebraska during the Senate state work period, I visited with dozens and dozens of middle-class Americans. It's truly the best part of my job, meeting with small business owners, ag producers, school teachers, nurses, students, and employees all across my home state. But this year, it was so frustrating to hear about the economic struggles that Nebraskans are facing. Middle-class Nebraskans are scraping by financially. And what's ironic is that they're doing it on the watch of a president who calls himself middle-class Joe. President Biden's line recently has been, when the middle class does well, everyone does well. You know, I agree with him. I would just add that right now, everyone is not doing well. That's especially true for the middle class. And it's because this administration's ill-advised policies keep pumping air into an economy that's already bloated. The so-called Bidenomics agenda is poison, described as a cure-all for the middle class Americans. And that is not an exaggeration. Last month, I saw Bidenomics up close in Nebraska. So let me tell you how it's going. One Saturday this August, I visited a small town in western Nebraska. That afternoon, a small business owner told me that his electricity bills have shot up over the past couple of years, both for his home and for his business. Greetings, friends. I have breaking news to share with all of you. A large number of Americans are being forced to retire early, but many are unprepared for future Social Security changes. Analysts have put together the best case scenario for the next cost of living adjustment. However, this could mean higher prices for everyday necessities. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the new details. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you need to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dearest friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Recent surveys indicate that a significant number of Americans are being pushed into early retirement, often without a clear understanding of how much they need to save for a comfortable retirement or how long their retirement funds may last. According to a recent study conducted by Edward Jones, 40% of their clients were forced to retire earlier than expected. A financial advisor at Edward Jones pointed out that reasons for forced retirement include company downsizing and more commonly health issues. This finding aligns with a survey by the Employee Benefit Research Institute, revealing a significant gap between when active workers expect to retire and when retirees actually do. Workers often report an expected retirement age of 65, while retirees state a median retirement age of 62. 
Some Americans even anticipate retiring at age 70, with one third expecting to retire at 70 or beyond, though only a small fraction actually follow through. Yahoo News has reported that the looming threat of early retirement is further complicated by the lack of proper financial planning among many Americans. Oftentimes, many workers avoid thinking about retirement, with 40% agreeing with the statement that they prefer not to concern themselves with retirement investing until they approach retirement age. Another challenge is a misunderstanding of potential life expectancy. Only a third of Americans are aware of the average lifespan of retirees. So in essence, retirement planning is very crucial for workers. But many are forced to return to work due to financial issues. In conclusion, these studies underscore the importance of saving for retirement, especially for younger workers. In a little more than a month, Social Security recipients will finally learn the cost of living adjustment for 2024. But based on current estimates as of September 2023, the COLA will likely be around 3%. That is well down from this year's historically high of 8.7% adjustment. There is a chance that the 2024 COLA could drop below 3% if the September inflation rate is especially low. The best case scenario is that a higher than expected inflation report pushes next year's COLA closer to 4%. The official 2024 cost of living adjustment is expected to be announced on October 12, 2023, when the September inflation numbers come out. The most recent inflation report for July 2023 showed a 2.6% year-over-year increase in the CPIW. The average monthly inflation rate has risen at a slightly higher pace, which is why most people think the 2024 COLA will be about 3%. The Senior Citizens League Estimates at a COLA of 3% would raise the average monthly Social Security benefit by nearly $54 because September is the final month to determine the 2024 COLA. Inflation would have to spike considerably to push the 2024 COLA much above 3%. That's because the COLA will only move higher if overall consumer prices also move higher. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts about next year's COLA? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. As previously reported by Go Banking Rates, one possibility is that a severe hurricane season in September may push the 2024 COLA higher. The reason has to do with the impact that hurricanes and tropical storms have on gasoline prices. Severe storms often disrupt oil and gas production and distribution, which sends gasoline prices higher. And those prices make up a key part of the inflation index, which is used to calculate the Social Security COLA. There have been some very heavy storms of late, including Tropical Storm Hillary on the West Coast and Hurricane Idalia along the Gulf Coast. AAA spokesman Andrew Gross told CNBC News, Certainly, hurricane season bears close to monitoring, and we are entering the heart of it now. A major storm impacting the Gulf Coast and nearby refineries will likely lead to a spike in gas prices for a few weeks. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this weekend. My dearest friends, thank you very much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To show my appreciation and to say thank you, I will be announcing several winners every Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.